The Kentucky high school student who stood smiling at a drumming Native American protester outside the Lincoln Memorial Friday says he was trying to defuse the situation, not mock the man. Video of the confrontation, including his classmates chanting, went viral and the boy was criticized on social media. His high school threatened to expel him. Nick Sandman, the student, released a statement saying there was tension among several groups, including people there for the March for Life and the Indigenous Peoples March, as well as others affiliated with the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. Your, your president is a homosexual. <laughs> Other videos show insults being traded among all groups. Meanwhile, fans brought a Trump banner to a Minnesota high school basketball game, enraging a coach who questioned its appropriateness in a Facebook post. Social media has become the primary forum for political debate, but is that the proper place for it? Joining me now are A-plus panel Republican strategist Allison Young. Hi, Bill. Hello, Allison. <laughs> and Linden Councilman Peter Brown. Hey, what's going on, Bill? So, guys, oh, yeah. we've had uh, two days now of this story, uh, the initial... Uh, news that came out. There was a lot of outrage on social media. Sure. Day two, we we're seeing a different side and perhaps even more information. What really happened? Peter, we're going to go to you first. I think we, we see a pattern here. Every time something comes out on social media, you know, we hear one side and all of a sudden another side comes out. And I think this goes to show that sometimes you need to take a step back from social media, get all the information before we rush to judgment to really uh, see what's going on. Allison, can we do that this day and age? It seems like before the story's even out, social media's running rampant with right. two different sides, maybe even three different sides yeah. of a story. But Bill, so many times on the show, we've seen these videos go viral and we say, gosh, we just wish we had more than these 10 or 15 seconds. In this case, we do. And so for people out there that are still choosing to ignore the longer video that shows that these kids weren't inciting any kind of violence or mocking, those people, if you're still putting that on social media, you are a racist, you are part of the problem, you are the fake news, shame on you. What can media be doing better to help sort through these issues? I think one thing that the media is responsible for is not a rush to judgment, you know. I mean, I remember back in the days you used to gather facts, information, interview people before you posted a video and had, had a reaction to it. You know, I'm not, I, we weren't there, and so we don't know everything that has happened in this situation. And I would love for the media to start doing a little bit more digging before we rush to judgment. Gosh, you can put a story out there like this in the media, if it fits their liberal leftist agenda, we'll just take it and run with it, true or not. I actually think this is a teachable moment for journalism students, and this will get studied. And I agree, you know, with teachable moment, I, I always go back to the, I remember that moment when Obama was in the White House and we had this situation in Harvard with the professor and the police officer, and it came to a point when the president had both of them sit down and you had what was called the coffee summit where we brought people together. Why can't we go back to that? When we have disagreements in society, we come together, figure out what the miscommunications was, and move forward. It's also a summit with beer, coffee, beer, whatever it takes to get it done. <laughs> we'll probably be back talking about this again.